Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, we now have joining us Achike Chude, Deputy Chairman, Joint Action Front, and Libro Soshoma, legal practitioner and public affairs analyst, to take a look at the ongoing looting in states and what next. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us once again. Uh, quickly, I'll start with you, Mr. Oshoma. Um, a lot of public figures have been working hard to um, show a disconnect between the looting and the end SARS protests. Let's begin from that premise. Um, could you clear for us that distinction between those that are looting and those that protested peacefully for over 10 days? Um, I really do not see a disconnect between um, uh, those that protested at toll gates and um, those that um, were looting. Everybody had their style of protest. Uh, the educated man would protest in a different way from the uneducated. Um, if we try to create a divorce, that means we have not learned any lesson uh, from um, the army of unemployed youths, from the army of um, uh, the uneducated youths that we are churning out. Various people have their various way of protesting. You don't expect the educated person to go looting shops uh, while protesting. But the uneducated one will, the first thing they understand when it's protest, it's about looting, destruction of properties. And that's what they understand. That's why you remember, even as young people, even when the moment you start protest, it degenerates into a riot. And then um, other people you refer to as hoodlums, I won't call them hoodlums, other uneducated Nigerians will do it the way they feel they know how to do it best. And so, it, it, they also they are also protesting, but their modus operandi is different and distinct from the protest of the educated one. If you remember the June 12 protests, the June 12 protests, the professors from Uniland started that protest in single file. They marched in a single file from um, Uniland, and before they got to Yaba, other protesters that you will refer to as hoodlums. Like I said, I wouldn't call them hoodlums. Let me, let me, let me, let me interject. And started the destruction. Let, let me interject and ask you this. Uh, we all have, um, 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 should I, I don't know if that will be understood in, the, in this context, a moral compass, right? We know that looting normally, especially uh, for private interest, is wrong. We know that destruction of property, yeah. ideally, is wrong. So if these people are doing yeah. the wrong thing, isn't there a better yardstick? Even the uneducated, you don't need an education to know that looting innocent properties is wrong. So what, what if, if you, because that is, that is the um, a distinction that a lot of persons are saying. They've amplified the fact that hoodlums, these people you say you don't want to rec uh, recognize as hoodlums, what terms would you use to describe people who deliberately set public mm. utility on fire? Um, what, term, what term would you use to describe people Senators, governors, ministers who deliberately dip their hand into the public coffers and take money that is meant to develop the state, the local government as a country. If you cannot describe them as hoodlums, I will not describe these ones as hoodlums. Education, it's not just the Western education. You're talking about morals. Some of these people, they do not even have the privilege and the opportunity of learning what is right or wrong. But we keep saying that the state, the responsibility of the state is the welfare and security of the people. And yet, we take away the resources that is meant to provide those responsibilities to the people. So when it happens like this, those of us that kept quiet, I, I feel bad that these things had to happen. I feel sad. I am not justifying the burning of properties 
I'm not justifying the looting of others' properties. But what I am trying to say is that when you keep quiet, when government take that which belong to the people, and you keep quiet because you are comfortable, the day it happens like this, few that kept quiet, both the government that took, all of you will be culpable. And that's why some of us say, when you drive expensive cars, you think because you take, I want to once said quickly, that the children of the poor that you refuse to educate will not allow your children to have peace. That All is right. destructive. Because the resources meant for provision of all of these things, one person will take it and we house it in the bank. The way we are seeing them, we house resources. All right, hold on, uh, Mr. Oshoma. So, when there is crisis, those Mr. people... Mr. Oshoma, can you hold on? I want to bring in Achike uh, Chude here um, and also get uh, his opinion. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chude, please quickly share with me. There, there is um, videos in the last couple of days of hundreds of people. If you saw what happened in Jos, you know, it's about the same thing that happened here in Lagos and across, you know, many states in the country. Um, so I want to get your view on what we are seeing in those videos. Would you call it greed, poverty, or protesting? The first question should be, was that, is okay. that for uh, me or for Achike? Oh, Mr. Achike Chude. Okay, then. Okay, um, yeah, um, I'll get to that, but let me just uh, maybe make uh, an input um, over the first question you asked. Go ahead, please. Protests don't in, in I mean in recent you know in the recent uh, past in this country do not evolve to violence and not usually hijack uh, hoodlums who also understand in most cases what the whole protest is all about. You know, there is a tendency for them to stay away and not hijack that protest, regardless of what the police says. And we've had very major protests in this country that did not devolve into uh, violence ex until the intervention of the state. The, the biggest, one of the biggest, um, you know, uh, protests that we've had in this country is uh, January uh, 3rd, 2012. We know how big it was, how large it was, and how peaceful it was until we had some, you know, uh, sporadic uh, interventions by security forces that led to the killing of some of the protesters, peaceful protesters. You know, we, I was fully involved in that all the way from the NLC Secretariat down to uh, to uh, to uh, Ikeja, okay. and it was peaceful throughout, you know, till we got to Ojota. And so we've had such instances where, but we all, always know that it is the usual refrain of security forces to tell you that the reason why they want to stop a protest is so that it cannot be hijacked by protesters. The reality is that there is no basis for any hijack by protesters if the police do their, jo their, their, do their job, and that is to accompany the protests and, or the protesters, to be there with them to ensure that uh, it does not devolve into violence. This did not obviously did not happen, you know. At like even lucky, there is even no basis for what happened eventually because of all the centers where we are having protests in the country. Lucky at that toll gate was one of the most peaceful where people were sitting down, you know. At the end of the day, so every other thing that happened subsequently was as a result of the gruesome murder of Nigerians who were uh, legitimately protesting about their state of gov about the state of governance in this country. So what I'm trying to say essentially is that you cannot devolve state intervention in the protests and in the breakdown of law and order that took place in Nigeria, all over the country, in most cases. We had governors, for instance, in Lagos State, where a, a, a vehicle belonging to the Lagos State government was used to convey talks. We had the video that has been trending in Abuja where somebody well suited, obviously, a, a member of, of, of the Nigerian state, one way or the other, brought in talks, an SUV, and then was given direction to the talks about how they were going to intervene in a peaceful to, 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 to you know to I mean a peaceful protest. So these are some of the issues. So if today we are talking about breakdown of law and order and the act of hooliganism that took place, you cannot remove the activities of the Nigerian state from it. The Nigerian state as the, as constituted by the federal government and Nigerian state as constituted by subnational units of the states of the federation. You know, a lot some states talks, talks. Be you know you know uh, uh, talks that 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 government governors were using. Or we are also involved even in the destruction that took place. So let's get that clear. And uh, you know, 
Then beyond that, again, you are asking about whether you know, the looting of uh, palliative centers was about greed and, and, and all that. Of course, greed does not come in. Greed only comes in you know, as a vice where you have had enough and you are still stealing. So from that perspective, we describe our politicians as greedy because they have everything. They have stolen essentially everything in the country. Some of them are earning about 35, 40 million, for instance, I'm, you know, talking about assemblymen at the national level, and yet they are still stealing. The governors, for instance, who have made so much money as governors, you know, apart from the security rules that they have on fettered access to, and nobody asks them questions about, about that, the allowances and all that. They leave, you know, government house and they end up in the Senate and they are still taking, you know, they are still paid so much more grossly. And beyond that also, they are also getting money from uh, oversight, uh, you know, illegally from oversight activities of ministries, parastatals and departments and the rest. That is great. When a person, a person, if I even from, from the word of scriptures, we are told that when a person steals, you know, food and that does not contain meat and fish, he has committed a crime or, you know, an offense. And when his court will be dealt with, but will be dealt with leniently because it will recognize that he was hungry. But when he packs fish and packs meat and puts it there, then you can talk about greed. It's no longer about hunger. So the people who have looted warehouses to steal a bag of rice, I mean, to take a bag of rice, after all, it's supposed to be theirs. We have been told that the palliatives are, the, are belong to the people. So when the people have discovered that these things have been there in these warehouses for months, and they have not been given out to the people. And they themselves know that ultimately these palliatives will not reach most of them. Then they will legitimately, by the time we get to this level, you know, of, of, of governance and this level of distrust of governance by the people and, you know, of the political leadership by the people and so on, the people will now also make the, you know, clear demands and will also uh, 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 decide what is actually theirs and what is not theirs. So when it comes to the issue of looting and destruction of properties, we must condemn it in the strongest of terms. It was wrong because they were also destroying the livelihoods of people. But when we talk about people who have invaded warehouses, uh, you know, to, to, to take food for the purpose of sustaining their families that the politicians have impoverished in this country, I see nothing and I will not condemn it and I refuse to condemn it. Because in doing that, they have not fought themselves. In fact, what happened was that they were even helping one another if, if you have not collected, they will, they will give you space to collect your own for yourself and for your families. After all, it belongs to the people. It does not belong to government. It does not belong to government officials. Those who right. do not need it. So how can anybody tell us or justify it that for months, somebody you know, made an assertion that he was actually leaving those palliatives uh, to, to give them out on his birthday? What has your birthday got to do with it? People are dying of hunger. Why would you wait for such a moment? You know, as your bed day to be able to feed the people who have... Who All right, um, I'm glad to, we're able you know. to make some uh, distinction uh, between the looting and, uh, you know, put our thoughts out there so those watching can really um, take a look into your minds as to what you are thinking on this issue. But moving forward, um, we now have a scenario that has put the protests of the uh, young people seemingly uh, in the background because we're now focusing uh, more on the destruction and wanton looting that has taken place uh, in the past days. Um, what would be uh, the next action for the protesters? Does this imply that their concerns have been pushed to the background or will this be brought back after now? What's your thinking? Uh, the question is to you, Mr. Oshima. Uh, you, you, it, for me, it is not a question of um, what, whether the protesters' demand have been pushed to the background. It is a, a question for government to actually ask itself basic questions. What led to protesting? And what can we do subsequently to ensure that you know such protests are averted they, they never expected that you know youths in nigeria could sustain a protest for that long and now that you know they have dared to sustain that protest government should be very very mindful of the fact that the right steps are not taken and the issues that led to the protest the general insecurity in the land, the general hunger, the misgovernance, if they are not addressed. An army 
can spring someday that might not be peaceful, that also might not listen to government if government does not do anything. Uh, and so, for me, it is like a warning signal. Yes, people protested. And then the intervention of government led to the protest being hijacked, to use their own words. And, and so, when it now happens, do you say that you have defeated the protesters? Oh, you've been able to disperse them. Everybody had gone home. And so to an extent, you will not meet the demands or address what led to the protest. You will be undoing yourself as government. So what should happen is, first and foremost, there should be reconciliation. Achike raised a very important point that a lot of people are, are, are missing. The protest was peaceful until the intervention of the apparatus in the protests. The day before in Abuja, and then on Tuesday in Lagos. And then on Wednesday, it went berserk because at that time, you, even those that have been looking for that opportunity, you know, government gave it to them. And after that, now properties were destroyed. And I, I will insist, while I, it is condemnable that properties were destroyed, but government should be held responsible for one first and foremost, attempting to muzzle out the protesters, and secondly, not caring for the teeming young population that you have. Because if you do not care for them, you are breeding an army of dissidents, an army of citizens that are not satisfied. At the end of the day, just a little spark will create mayhem and wreck, wreck havoc in your state. So, because the responsibility, the higher responsibility is on the government. And that is why well, the first thing they need to do is reconciliation. Reconciliation means justice. While you are trying to, to serve justice on the task, also justice should be served on the army that fired at innocent protesters. Whether this idea of uh, did somebody die or did uh, uh, nobody die, it shouldn't even be there. The right. question should be, I want to some stop soldiers here. fired at innocent, defenseless protesters. It's a war crime. And that led to the spiral effect that we see. If right. the government decides to take justice from there and say, these are the people that fired those shots, we ensure that they are tried and brought to book. And okay. then, I'm, I'm, you know, Mr. Oshoma, I want to quickly step in here and uh, uh, bring in... Um, a, a certain aspect of this you know, whole conversation. Um, over the past few days, we've seen reactions from the Oba of Lagos um, after, of course, his palace was vandalized, his staff was stolen. Um, we've also seen uh, reactions from other government officials. Uh, Senator Itagiwa also was, it was on, on social media um, after videos of her kneeling down to plead with the youth um, in her... Um, um, of course, a district to calm down. So, uh, Professor Shoma, I want you to speak on the relationship that these persons have with the people that they are meant to represent. Um, how, you know, what, what must they start to do from today in order to have a better, you know, uh, relationship with these young people and maybe also rep represent them better? This protest started, I did say that it will not cost the government or government representative, like the House of Assembly members, the police, the senators, it won't cost them anything to come up to say, young people, we are sorry. We misrepresented you. We misruled you. We abused you. We've raped you violently. We've refused to provide governance. We are sorry. Give us another opportunity. We have seen that you cannot only back, but you can bite. Give us another opportunity to do it well. All right. In America, when the protest started, the Black Lives Matters protest, in spite of, you know, the counter protesters, uh, uh, supporters of uh, the president, it took a policeman to 
say, I will go on me to beg you to say we are sorry for the actions and inactions of the police. His colleagues joined him. And to today, that became a way of appealing for the crime of the states before now and also preaching against racism. All right. Um, let, let's uh, see if we can uh, get uh, Mr. Chide to, we're told we're almost out of time for this conversation. I want you to speak on that um, issue of uh, the military in this particular instance, and security agents. Uh, we saw in some of the videos that has been showing on the screen, uh, some people, uh, some officers standing by why this looting uh, went on. And we've also seen that in many places, um, they weren't, uh, there were no show when people needed them uh, the most. Going forward, what should the uh, security agencies be doing now to restore a bit of confidence in the ability to protect the innocent Nigerian? I, I, I don't know yet. Yes, Felicity, I don't know whether, whether it's about the security agents doing something or whether it is about the government wanting them to do something. Uh, you know, so, but beyond that, again, is the fact that uh, we are still having you know, a new colonial security infrastructure in this country. Some of the things that we inherited, you know, from, a, from the British colonialists and so on. So we have not exactly structured or restructured our security forces and to put it in line with, you know, the reality that we face as a people. So you also find out that the mentality of uh, the political leadership in this country is also wrong. You know, and so what we're seeing is part of, are part of the consequences <clears throat> of the misgovernance that's going on. So the lucky thing was bound to happen. If it didn't happen in lucky, it would have happened somewhere else. It was bound to happen because we already have a trajectory of, you know, violent conduct by the uh, Mr. Chude, in, in, in if, you can, if, you can, if you can make a submission in like 40 seconds, what needs to give? What needs to change? Because the idea is for us to move forward from where we are at now. What needs to change, please? What needs to change? Well, well the, 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 the mentality of, uh, the gov of governance has to change. The mentality of the political le leadership has to change. They have to realize that they have a duty, and that duty is primarily to the people of uh, this country. It is right. only when they begin to operate from that prison of, of working in the interest of the people of Nigeria that we cannot begin to come up with policies that are, you know, are, you know, that are get towards addressing some of the socioeconomic uh, you know, uh, deficits in the country. All right, Mr. To Chike, address the hunger in the country. Because it's not one thing the I'm, president I'm came on. I'm afraid we're, we're out of time, Mr. Chude. Thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast. And, uh, and of course, um, Elvira Soshoma, thank you as well for joining us on The Breakfast. Your thoughts and time is appreciated. All right, we continue with... Uh, Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.